Hi everyone, welcome back to Random House's virtual event series. My name is Taylor, I work in marketing here at Random House, and I also recommend books on my own channel, Books with Taylor. Today I'm going to be joined by Josie Silver, who is the best-selling author of One Day in December and The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. I'm going to quickly pin a comment here to the top so everyone can, who's tuning in later can see what we're talking about. And now I'm going to let Josie Let's see here. Feel free to introduce yourselves in the comments. I want to know where you're tuning in from and what you're reading. Um, and just to, oh, there you are. Hello. Yeah, hello. Can you see me? I can. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So I've read your books. I am a huge, huge fan of both of them. Oh, and thank I thought, you. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. And I thought that you could start by telling us a little bit about yourself and about your wonderful books. Okay. Um, well, I'm Jersey Silver. Um, and I've been writing for, um, I've got two books out as Josie, but I've actually been writing now for almost 10 years um, under a couple of different names. Um, and my Josie Silver books are One Day in December, um, which was December um, 2018. And now it's Lydia Bird it has been out for just a couple of months. Um, so yeah, that's me. Great. So you've written two wonderful, amazing, super successful rom-coms and I'm wondering if you can tell us how you did that what's your writing process what kind of tips do you have okay um well I mean um I mean I've always wanted to be one of those writers who goes out and writes in coffee shops and libraries and um, I always think it looks so glamorous when people are kind of eaves and um, you know on other people I can't do it I tried and I'm terrible at writing anywhere apart from at home um I have to have somewhere quiet um <laughs> Um, and with One Day in December, I used to, we've moved house, but I, I wrote One Day in December in our old house. And I had a lovely little office that was kind of tucked away. Um, so that was nice. And then we moved house. Um, and uh, theoretically, this house should be better for writing in. Um, it's bigger and it's kind of old and it's got some nice writing spots in. Um, I've got a lovely kind of window seat in the bedroom and I've got this image of myself writing there. Um, and I set up a little office here, but it didn't really work because the space kind of <laughs> was communal and I'd got my husband walking through and my teenage boys and the two cats and the dog. And, you know, it was really quite, kind of noisy. Um, a lot of distractions. So, lots of distractions. <laughs> so I've had this lovely little office built in the garden. Um, and oh my God, it's just like the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's like a sanctuary and I've got you know, it, it's just, it smells nice and there's no boys and no one's shouting at me to say, you know, what are you doing and where's my rugby kit? <laughs> I'm so peaceful. I love it. I, I, it. It's even better than I thought it would be. Um, I just come in and I light a candle, put music on. Um, I can't have any kind of talking or radio, but just music um, in the background. Um, I've got different playlists. I have playlists for my different books that kind of, you know reflect what's happening in the story at the time so I'll put the playlist on that kind of suits the book and that will help me kind of you know get in the right mood for writing mm -hmm. um so yeah so I've got this lovely office now and it's made all the difference to kind of my productivity and to my just being able to get in the mood for writing so I'll come here you know I'll be mom I'll get up be mom for half an hour get the kids off to school you know pre obviously pre what's going on at the minute um, and then come down here, bring a coffee and just get in the mood, you know, for writing for half an hour, have a little look at social media and then switch off and just kind of write through the day then. Might stop for lunch because my husband works at home, so he might come and have lunch, that kind of thing. Um, and it's lovely, you know, it's just such a nice place to work, a tiny little commute from home, but it feels as if I actually go out, that, go out of home and go to work. That sounds so <laughs> idyllic. It really is actually, and it's in the garden, so it's all lovely and lush, and um, and I just love it. And I'll, I'll write all day, um, and then go back and be mom again for the evening, you know, dinner, all that kind of stuff. And then it I tend to write. So easy. Oh, well, it's not that it's easy. It's just that you know, I kind of, you know, you you find what works for you, don't you? And you know, I'll write in the evening sometimes after the kids have, you know gone off to do their own things you know we've got a couple of living rooms so we'll go in the other living room away from everyone 
curl up, you know, corner of the sofa, blanket, glass of wine, carry on. Um, and, it, and it's no hardship because I just love it so much. You know, it just is, you know, I can't believe I actually get paid to do this job. I just love it. <laughs> We're happy to pay you. We love it. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll keep doing it for as long as people will let me. <laughs> for those of you who are just tuning in, this is Random House Live with Josie Silver who's the author of The Two Lives of Lydia Bird and One Day in December. And we're talking about Josie's writing routine. So if you have questions for her, please use the little question box down at the bottom. I have a ton, but I'd love to get to some of yours as well in our time that we have. Um, so Josie, my next question for you is about your inspiration. Um, your books remind me a lot of some of my favorite rom-coms, Love Actually, um, P.S. I Love You. And I'm wondering, where do you get your inspiration? Um. Well, it comes from lots of places. I mean, I'm a, a big reader of romance myself. So, you know, I absolutely love sort of my own keys, Jojo, you know, all of the, all of the normal, you know, brilliant romance writers. Um, and um, I grew up in my teenage years. I was a big reader of kind of Jackie Collins and Jilly Cooper, all of the big kind of sprawling romances with, um, you know, real alpha heroes and, really kick-ass women that kind of stuff and I think that sort of gave me a base for romance um and yeah so I, I mean I, I can't imagine that I would ever write anything other than romance I've tried occasionally you know I had a little goat writing a thriller and I was terrible <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I think I'm romance through and through <laughs> it looks like we have a couple audience questions here okay see. oh this is so wonderful this person, um, Baby Got Books, says, when is your no next book coming out? You're my favorite author. Uh, that's really sweet. Um, well, my next book, we, we haven't got the date exactly for it yet. Um, and I think it probably will, you know, be probably moved around because of what's going on generally in the, in the publishing world and in the, in the world in general at the minute. Um, but I'm working on it. Um, what can I tell you about my next book? I can tell you that obviously it's romance. Um, I can tell you that it's no parallel universes, which thank goodness for that, because that book was so hard to write. I <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a friend with, with Lydia and with, well, One Day in December obviously spanned 10 years. So it was kind of nice to have that luxury of all of that time to to write about but then you have to kind of be careful and choose out you know what to show and what to leave out so that the book still feels like a complete story mm -hmm. um so uh, you know there is that with one day in december and then with lydia obviously my my first plan was to try and write something a bit easier to write because i thought you know one day in december was difficult and then so you then there's a break Yes, and then the idea for Lydia came and it was even more complicated and even more difficult um, because there was two worlds and, you know, and two lots of everyone and, and it was even more complicated and difficult to write because the thing with that book is th that it was difficult to write in a way that would make it easy to read, um, which I hope we pulled off in the end. Um, so the next book, my plan is not to have any parallel worlds, not to have ten year, ten year span. Um, what can I tell you about? I can tell you there's lots of love letters in the book. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and I can tell you that my central couple are called Emma and Bill, and that they are not together at the time of the book for a very important reason that I cannot reveal, or my editor will kill me. <laughs> I cannot um, wait to read it. Um, yeah. It sounds like a lot of your fans can't wait to read it. We have a yeah. ton of questions. Um, okay. Giselle would like to know what are some of your favorite books? Okay. Um, I mean, at the moment, I find that probably like a lot of other people, actually, that I've gone back to reading my favorite comfort reads. Um, I mean, I, I generally will read pretty much anything, you know, historical or um, nonfiction, that kind of stuff. Um but at the moment I'm reading, um, if you had the Durrell, the Durrell's show in America, um, it was here, um, just the kind of read that just makes you feel comforted. And um, so 
yeah, my family and other animals. And you can see this is sellotape together <laughs> and it's the oldest, dirtiest thing. It's well loved. I love it. So that's why it looks like that. <laughs> so all of you tuning in can add that to your shopping cart when you're buying the two lives of Lydia Bird after our live today. A little bonus <laughs> purchase for you. And let's see if a lot more questions. Um, let's see, what's the best one here? Oh, I like this one. Um, another question from Baby Got Books. Do you um, do your characters before... Do a character map before you start? Okay, so the answer to that should be yes, I think. <laughs> but the answer to that is a big fat no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what I tend to do is have um, the character in mind physically, kind of. Um, and I'll have a start of the story in, in my head and I'll have a end point and perhaps a few of the twists and turns that are going to happen. But then beyond that, no, I'm not really a, a planner. Um, I wish I was because it's quite chaotic, actually, you know, to, to write in this way and quite scary because you kind of some days you'll sit down and think, OK, what's going to come out my fingers today? <laughs> Which way is it going to go? Yeah. And, I, you know, and I, I've got used to that being my process. I used to try and plan out a lot more. Um, but I would find that I would spend a lot of time planning and then it would deviate anyway from there. So, yeah, so my planning is quite loose. <laughs> and how do you come up with your characters? Are they inspired by people from real life? Are they all in your head? How do you do it? Um, well, it varies. You know, sometimes it is, um, like, for instance, with Lydia. Um, Lydia's got a sister called Al, and... I've got a sister who is the same age gap between myself and my sister as Elle and Lydia. And I didn't have to look very far for inspiration for, um, for Elle. You know, my sister is my um, better in pretty much every way. You know, she's my elder sister and she kind of trailblazes and I just follow behind basically, <laughs> like a little duckling. And that's pretty much the relationship that Lydia and Elle have got as well. Um, but Does I did, your sister I did... know that she's the basis for that character? Yeah, I think so. Well, if she reads it, I mean, <laughs> it's actually dedicated to her as well. But whether or not she'll read it, I don't know. You know, she, she, she didn't read One Day in December because she said, I've heard that much about it. I know exactly what's going to happen. No, there are surprises <laughs> in that book. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm sure she will read it. I'm sure she will. Amazing. We have a ton more questions here. Let's see. Um... Do you have any tips for aspiring writers? Tips for aspiring writers? Um, well, I would say, I mean, for me, I always knew I wanted to write romance. So I joined the um, Mills and Boone Harlequin forums um, and I made some lovely friends who were in the same kind of position who wanted to write romance and we entered their competitions and that kind of stuff. So if you can find people who are, you know, similarly in the same position as you and and, and you know form perhaps a group and quit each other's work read for each other um but really just to put pen to paper and just go for it without feeling worried about it or you know without worrying where it's going to go afterwards just start you know and be brave and just you know have a cup of tea on the side or a glass of wine if it's in the evening <laughs> and, and just just let it go because you know what's the worst that can happen really um oh. you know well, yeah, I mean, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have um, training particularly. I didn't go to college for writing or anything like that. I just always knew that I really wanted to do it. Um, and when I was on maternity leave with my um, youngest, it was coming to crunch time when I was going to have to go back to work. And I just thought, this is the only opportunity that I've got, really, this little gap of time, you know, to have a go properly. And I entered the Mills and Boone competition and it kind of all went from there. So, yeah, just be brave. Just just do it yeah that's my advice is just don't let anyone tell you that you can't and just go for it we have another great question here which of your characters do you relate to the most and why oh gosh okay well probably we'll say in one day in december um probably laurie because um i'd say i'm probably quite similar in in personality to laurie you know I'm, Sarah was very big and bold and bright, whereas I'm more of a kind of sit back and, you know, sit on the sides and watch what's happening, more of a probably a proper writer, actually, you know, just like to sit and watch and see what's going on, but keep, you know, keep your own counsel and quite, quite quiet, 
quite um you know i'm quite happy to not go anywhere for days <laughs> that sounds well, terrible you're having a good time right now then. Well, I'm probably managing better than some people, put it that way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd say probably Laurie if I was going to choose one. I think Lydia would be my favourite, but maybe it's just because I spent time with her so recently. I do love Lydia, actually. She's such an endearing character. You know, she's kind of lived in my head for the last 18 months and I miss her. Do you know what I mean? When they've gone, it's kind of like, oh, they've all gone. <laughs> Well, then we get to enjoy them, which is such a special treat. Yeah, and that's the scary bit for me. <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't imagine. Um, so for those of you who are tuning in, this is Random House Live with Josie Silver, who's the author of The Two Lives of Lydia Burke and One Day in December. We just have a few minutes left, so put all of your final questions in the little question box, and I'll try to get to some of them. In the meantime, I have a quick few questions for you, Josie. Um, I have okay. this idea of all authors just sitting in um, and they're PJs when they write. And I'm wondering, are you a PJ writer in your pajamas? Um, or do you actually get dressed every day to write? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got dressed today, but this is probably the first time in woof, about five days that I've actually worn proper <laughs> clothes. Um, I think I kind of walk the line between the middle. Um, you know, it, it, um, it, it's um, acceptable to leave the house, but not particularly dressed up, I would say. Um, yeah, I love PJs. I love my comfort clothes. So, you know, if I can get away with pajama bottoms and fluffy socks, that's kind of my perfect. <laughs> love that. And do you have a favorite snack that you turn to when you're writing? Oh God, I'm a terrible snacker. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, this is the good thing with being in the garden actually, because I'm distant from the house. So I'm a bit more distant from the kitchen. So, so I have to bring my snacks with me um, and I do try and be good um, but I just love chocolate hobnobs you know and a cup of coffee and then usually a bag of wine gums is hiding somewhere on the dresser so I'll go and like that's my you know if I write a thousand words I can have a couple of sweets and you know just use them as an incentive um, so good. yeah I'm a terrible snacker. <laughs> um, and what do you do if you if you get writer's block do you have any ways of working through that? Um, sometimes I'll go to pen and paper, you know, because usually I'll be typing on my laptop, but sometimes if I get a bit of a, just get stuck, I'll go and write longhand and then in the process of kind of transcribing it across into the manuscript, tidy it up that way. So sometimes I'll do that. Or sometimes I'll just go and do something else, you know, just for a little while, go and either read or the house is, we're renovating the house at the minute, so I'll go and do something, you know, completely different, go and do some painting or, you know, just something completely different and then come back to it fresh. Amazing. Well, we are about out of time here, so I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. This was- yeah, that went so quickly. <laughs> I know, it goes fast, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now you have the rest of your Saturday back. Um, oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. For all of you who've watched, please go buy The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. It's my personal favorite. It was just released. And it is the perfect comfort read for when you're stuck at home right now. Oh, thank you so much. Of course. All right. Bye, everyone.